This is Dr. Amy Picklesheimer. I'm one of the maternal fetal medicine specialists. And I'm going to explain today how preventing preterm birth is like riding in a canoe. Actually, it's not riding in a canoe at all. It's preventing preterm birth. But I'm going to talk about prevention. So a great metaphor for prevention is thinking about um, a little man who sets out in a boat not knowing that just down the river is a giant waterfall with uh, at the bottom sharp rocks that could that could hurt him. So there are three different places that we can prevent uh, adverse outcomes for this little man. The first thing would be primary prevention. So examples of primary prevention uh, really would be just keeping him from getting in the boat in the first place. Uh, maybe we change the weather so it's a rainy day and he doesn't want to go for a boat or um, we take his boat away from him or, or something to prevent him from getting in that river in the first place. So really just avoiding the occurrence of disease at all. So examples of that in medicine, uh, the main one is immunization. So if you can immunize somebody, then you can prevent them even if they've been exposed to some pathogen from ever developing disease. So the second place that we can um, <clears throat> work to prevent this little guy um, from smashing into the rocks is once he's in the boat and heading down the river, uh, we can do something to um, save him before um, disaster strikes. So this is secondary prevention, which is really looking at detecting disease prior to the onset of symptoms. So saving him somehow before he hits the waterfall. Uh, that may be throwing him a rope or shouting to him from the bank, um, but anything that really keeps him from um, going over the edge uh, are things that would be considered secondary prevention. So examples of secondary prevention in medicine uh, would be pap smears and mammograms in maternal in um, OBGYN. And the last place that we can uh, work to um, make things better uh, would be ter tertiary prevention. And that really has to do uh, with reducing the negative impact of disease. So those are patients that have gone, gotten in the boat, gone down the river, gone over the edge of the waterfall, and now we're doing our best to keep them from smashing to their death on the rocks. So um, for that example, you could use a big giant balloon that you would throw out uh, to make the landing soft on the rocks, or you could throw a net across the, across the water to keep the um, boat from smashing onto the rocks. So um, in medicine, an example of that is um, for somebody with angina that you would put a stent in before they have their heart attack. So let's look at these examples in terms of preterm birth, and we'll start with tertiary prevention. So our main um, tertiary pre prevention um, are really steroids for fetal lung maturity. So that's a patient that comes in, she's 28 weeks, she's six centimeters dilated. We're gonna do our best to get those steroids on board. Um, we're also gonna be using uh, magnesium sulfate in order to um, have some neuroprotection for the baby to improve the outcome in the nursery um, once the baby arrives. And really, one of the most important things we also do um, is transfer the patient, make sure that they're delivering in a center that has a NICU that's capable of taking care of the baby. A lot of the focus in OB um, happens to be um, secondary prevention of preterm birth. So this would be um, ultrasound um, for cervical length. And those may be even in asymptomatic patients or anybody who um, may be having symptoms, either one, we can look at their, their length on, on um, ultrasound, which may change before we can appreciate a change clinically with just a vaginal exam. For women that we find a short cervix, we can use progesterone um, vaginally in order to prevent um, further cervical shortening. Uh, this category of secondary prevention, really all tocolysis really falls in, in here. Although most of the reason that we tocalize patients are really to give time for these steroids to become mature. Sometimes we can't stop this process of preterm labor before the um, baby's delivered. Or, um, the metaphor would be that, you know, we smash on the rock. So before we end in our delivery, um, sometimes tocolysis is um, successful in um, reducing preterm birth. Some of the things that have not shown successful for secondary prevention but are still sort of widely used would be um, bed rest um, and hydration <clears throat> for patients. Finally, the last category um, is primary prevention of preterm birth and sort of sadly there's not a lot of things in this category. Um, we do have cerclage 
that you can use in a patient that has a history of um, a previous preterm birth or cervical incompetence to prevent that in a secondary in a second follow-up pregnancy. Surplage actually also falls here under secondary prevention because it's something you can use um, together with a ultrasound finding of a shortened cervical length. And one of the newer things we have in this category is 17-hydroxyprogesterone, um, uh, which we give weekly uh, to women that have a history of a previous preterm birth. And beginning that treatment prior to 16 weeks gestational age has been shown to reduce the risk for a subsequent preterm birth by about 30%. So this is really a very valuable new therapy that we have um, to help with primary prevention of preterm birth. Sadly, we don't really have anything that's effective for women that are otherwise low risk. We can use both cerclage and um, intramuscular progesterone in women with a history of previous preterm birth. We don't have anything yet for otherwise low risk women to predict whether or not she's going to be delivering early or prevent that um, primary prevention of preterm birth. So thank you for your attention and hopefully this was helpful.